Good morning, everyone. It's Adelaide Winterstep. It's currently 5.30 a.m. here at the barn, and it is time to start with morning barn chores. Super excited to start on this busy, busy day, so let's get straight into it. I typically start with feeding all the horses their hay. Maya's in charge of their actual feeding mix, so I just do the basics of water and hay. And while she's doing that, I begin to groom the horses. I like the horses to be clean at all times. It's just a general, respectful thing to have in the barn. And so I typically start with grooming three to four horses every morning to get things started and go through with my basic curry scrub and getting all the spots off as well as hoof picking out all the horses and cleaning up any droppings off the floor of the barn. So now it's time for me to start leading the horses out to the pasture. They start to get a little bit rowdy when the sun comes up. So today I'm taking Stargazer out to the pasture and all the horses have assigned pastures at different times in the morning so they get a couple hours out on the grass and so I decided to lead them out, have some fun with the dog Rowdy and yeah, just kind of have a, kind of a relaxed nice morning before I headed out for the daily routine. So it's currently 7 a.m. now, and I'm gonna go ahead and head out to go see an old friend from Writing Academy back in middle school, and I'm super duper pumped. So I'm going to the Paddock Island Arena where they have a nice little jump set up, um, especially during these quiet hours. This is Rick Winchester, and he's with his horse, Gisadia, and I've known him for a super long time now. It's so awesome to say hi to him again. We Ooh! stuttered um just to get to say hi to him again and yeah he's been over in university so i haven't been able to see him as much he's been show jumping quite a bit for quite a few years now and he used to show a lot a couple years back he was showing basically every weekend until roughly six months ago when he went to an invitational in south hoof and he just had a really really bad time i think he had a nasty fall or something and yeah, we haven't really seen him out on the show, show ring ever since, and I think he's coming back into it now. It's great to see his confidence riding, rising once again, because Sadia he's been with for a couple years. I think they're both in need of kind of a confidence boost, and I think he's attending a show in a couple days, he told me. So, really exciting to get to see him practice. He's honestly such a great writer, and it's nice to start off my day with kind of an inspiration, getting to see writers like this in the mornings. So, yeah, super duper cool. Got to see Rick again. He might be showing up in a couple of my other videos as well. And now it's currently 9.30 a.m., so time to head out. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and head on over to a couple of lessons that I have in the midday. And so I'm just going to slip into something a little more warm weather appropriate since it's gotten really hot lately. So I'm able to take off my jacket and put on some sunglasses that are pretty slick. And I had to head on out to a lesson. So I have Miriam and Pepper, and Miriam is relatively new to the barn, and I have Emma and Bob, and Emma's been going to the barn for four or five years now, so kind of a mixture of students in the same lesson. I typically let these students lead their own warm-up so that they can see what's best for their horse at the moment and the time, and so yeah, so I'm going to go into depth with both of them. We have Miriam and Pepper, and Miriam's only been going to our barn for a couple months now, and so she's still a little nervous. She's not so used to the trainers or the horses here, and she only comes once a week, so she doesn't get that much practice in. But um, she's been relaxing a lot more lately. She recently started riding Pepper as her lesson horse, and they work really well together. Now, Pepper is not a fan of jumping, as you may know, but nonetheless, he was really, really fantastic, handled it super duper well, and I'm really happy for them. I hope she's going to settle in as the time goes on. So we just did some basic stuff now so that she could relax and just enjoy the experience of being out. So now on to Emma and Bob. So Bob is a really, really sensitive horse, and Emma has been struggling lately to make sure she knows what she's asking for. She often makes really last-minute decisions, and her cues aren't completely clear to him, and it gets really frustrating for the both of them. So sometimes Bob just kind of falls out of it. He gets frustrated. She gets frustrated. Lately, he's been going sticky on a lot of jumps, but I was just, you know, trying to keep it positive, trying to keep him affirmed and make sure that she was being patient and understanding with him and that she herself was fixing her issues with not being clear enough. Just kind of a frustration, common frustration between a lot of riders and horses. And so we're just kind of working on those problem spots. Okay, so I'm back. I just finished up with that group lesson as well as another private lesson that I had after that. It's currently 12.30 p.m. and I have to head on over to an interview, so let's get to it. So this interview was actually with Yorvik H Magazine, a magazine I'm commonly working with lately, and they just asked me about some past rides, some competitions I had been to, just a basic Q&A, and it was actually really, really fun. Um, and so hopefully they'll post that eventually. I don't know yet if I'll post on my channel. I still have to see if I can get it, but yeah, it was really cool footage, and it was just kind of a fun stop for me. 
Okay, so I finished up with my interview roughly 20 minutes ago, and I quickly sped over to the barn, changed something comfortable, and it's now 3 p.m., and I'm about to ride a horse that I think you guys will really, really like. This is Pem, and Pem is a seven-year-old Irish sport horse who has been recently imported. Actually, not recently. It's been a while, but he's one of my client's horses, and she's been working with him for a couple years now, and she just does basic things like hacking out and riding in an enclosed arena, very, very relaxed rider, but lately she's been thinking about possibly selling Pem to a teenager who wants to ride him in something a little more advanced. And so she reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to work with Pem for the next couple months to get him up to a level where he's a more confident and outgoing horse? And so I've decided that I will take him out, go out more places, trailer out, try him at shows. He's not very experienced in that. And work on his buttons and he has a lot of the basics down. He just needs to be pushed to try new things. And he's a very curious horse. So I finally decided on doing some training for a couple months and maybe trying to bring him to Kensington. I have her consent to bring him to Kensington and she said she would like to see him try and compete a little bit more. So maybe if I can show him in a couple of novice Kensington classes, something super basic for him to get started on, I thought it would be really, really cool since I didn't have a Kensington horse yet. So I was thinking, you know, this Kensington, it might just be best for me to chill out a little bit and work with a horse that just needs a lot of training and... Here we are. <laughs> For him, it'd just be more getting buttons and trying him out in new places. You guys might get to see Pem around a lot, a lot more. And I'm kind of excited for that. He's a really, really cool horse, and I'm hoping to see if he'll improve over these next couple weeks or months um, to get to a level to where he can finally go out and go to this high-level competition. Okay, so now it's about 5 p.m. or so, and I'm going to go ahead and hand Grace Darcy because he's been a little rowdy today, but we didn't have him on the paddock schedule, so we're just going to let him out right now. Anyways, um, this is Darcy. He's an ex thoroughbred client's horse, by the way. So I decided I'd answer a couple of really commonly asked questions for all y'all so that you can know a little bit more. So I chose three questions that I've seen most commonly lately. Um, firstly, do I do meet and greets? The answer to that is occasionally. I did a meet and greet roughly a month back. It was a really big hit, so I've decided I might try to come up with a schedule to where like the first Monday of every month I'll do a meet and greet or something. Don't know yet, but I might do that so that it's easier for people to come and see me because usually I'm on more quiet servers. Second question, is the club still open? Sadly, no, it closed down roughly four months ago, but I'm still getting so many inquiries on if people can join my club. So just a disclaimer for that, I'm not in a club. I probably won't be in a club and um, the club is closed. So yeah, it's not gonna be open for a long time, if ever. Um, and lastly, how do I make my outfits? I get a lot of questions on this because I have different outfits in every single video. Typically, I just find clothes that have been for clothes that i want a little bit more bedazzled i choose the newer clothes because those have better graphics um and more realistic graphics but for those that i want just basic clothes i definitely recommend going to go out and find um go to places like moreland because they have a lot cheaper basic clothes and they also look super realistic i have so many clothing tips i don't even know where to start but um yeah just finding clothes that you think look good and would definitely match there are several colors that Star Stable has that they have a lot in their clothing range, which is a crimson red, a navy blue, um, like an olive forest green, and a dark brown. Those are some colors, just a couple examples of the really common colors that you see in their new clothing. So buying clothes like that, you can mix and match a lot. Um, I definitely recommend places like Mistfall and Governor's Fall and the mall. That's the three main places where I get my gear. Also highly underrated are stores in Yarlaheim. They actually have a lot of super cute gear, so check those out. Anyways, that's, that's a bit of a ramble. Um, yeah, so those are just three common questions. I might start answering more questions in my videos when I have the free time and my vlogs, so I hope you all enjoyed that. <laughs> Anyways, now on to the rest of the video. So after doing some more barn chores, I decided it was time to clean up just a little bit and drive on home. It's currently about 8 p.m. with the spring. The sun goes down pretty late now in Jarlheim, in Jorvik in general, so absolutely lovely. But yeah, after long days like this, it's super exciting to get to be able to go back home and sleep and change into comfortable clothes. But I always miss the horses anyways. Nonetheless, I'll finally get some sleep after this long day. I literally have struggled so much with voiceovers today. I'm so frustrated. For some reason, I can't get the words out, and I sound so aggressive, and I don't know why. 
Oh my gosh. Um, anyways, after spending literally two hours on voiceovers, we're finally done. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for everyone supporting this channel. And just want to say, if you like this kind of content, remember to comment, like, and subscribe. I hope to see you all next time. Hopefully my voiceovers will be better. And bye. <laughs>